Hey guys, it's me, Teresa Perrin. I have another banger for you, and that would be Blue Apron, ticker APRN. A is in Alpha, P is in Papa, R is in Romeo, N is in November. And I believe that it is the next short squeeze candidate based on today's price action. So most importantly, we are going to want to look for it to break through $5.04 next. And that will be confirmation of the next level up. So let's take a look at the DD and see what's going on here. I have Oratex, Fintel, and a whole bunch of other data for you. Let's get started. If you could please like and subscribe and remember nothing I say is financial advice. All right, to start off, let's discuss what Blue Apron is for those of you who do not know. And it is not a small company as they have 1,694 employees. Guys, it's basically a food prep kit um, meal plan type thing, you know, that you order through the mail and they bring you uh, weekly meal plans. They offer four weekly meal plans, a two serving signature plan, a two serving vegetarian plan, a two serving wellness plan, and a four serving signature plan. For meal plans, customers have the flexibility to choose any combination of the recipes offered in their selected plan each week. The company also sells wine as well as a curated selection of cooking tools, utensils, pantry items, and add-on products for different culinary occasions, which are tested and recommended by its culinary team. Its products are available to purchase through its website and mobile application. So guys, if you're looking for an easy way to prep your meals and just have to you know, cook it and follow the simple direction, everything's all tossed together for you, this is a great time saver and it's becoming more and more popular in American homes. A few days ago, Lake Street initiated Blue Apron Holdings at a buy with a $9 price target. Currently, the previous price analysis for this company were a high of $10, a low of $8, and an average of $9.33. There were only two other companies that did analysis on Blue Apron, as you can see here. One gave it a strong buy and the other gave it a regular buy. So the consensus is given as a strong buy, which at this time, I would have to agree. Um, currently, we closed the day at $4.63, which was an increase of 21.52% with $0.82 cents up on the day, guys. In the after hours, um, at the time I took the screenshot, it was at four sixty, but I just looked a few minutes ago and it was four sixty five. So it's kind of bouncing in the range of where it closed at, which is good. Uh, then check out the technical analysis. Guys, I love this new feature on Weeble. Um, it's not 100% accurate, but it's pretty good from what I've seen so far. Anyways, they give it a strong bullish signal with a short-term price increase and a medium-term price increase. The long has not converted over as of yet. That doesn't mean that it won't. Uh, but as you can see, these are the signals. All these little green dots in here mean it's a bullish buy signal. It's a technical event that is bullish. These two little red squares are bearish technical events. So as you can see, there's six bullish and two bearish and all of the most recent um, except for one have been bullish. So this is very positive. Again, this is where I'm getting that $5.04 price that we need to get over because that is our next level of resistance. And it came down, guys, and formed a perfect W. Well, the only thing I would have liked to see is for the bottom of this W to just dip slightly under the 227 of this. That didn't happen, but that's okay. It's still a W formation, and that is bullish. Moving on, we got a great article that came out today from a place that I don't really care about, but Seeking Alpha, um, who wrote Blue Apron Pops on Potential Short Squeeze Action. And that was based off of this morning's movement, which again was bullish. Now, guys, I have seen lots of DD floating around and I just want to advise you that there's no proof right now that Blue Apron is being acquired or taking private. So please don't fall into the FUD. Yeah, I, you could say that about any company, I guess. But there, until I see proof or a filing, 
that's not even something I'm making my trading decision on. So I prefer not to, you know, fall into that. And then guys, there are different people with different price targets. I've seen $9 to $10 floating around. And then the Citron Research gave it a $40 price target, interestingly enough. Um, the float is only $9 million on this. The short interest at this time was 55%. Guys, we're going to take a look at that because that has changed according to Ortex. And then we'll review Fintel as well. The utilization is 100%. And 72.5% of shares are held by all insiders, according to Yahoo Finance. 30.47% of shares are held by institution and 110.80% of the float is held by institutions, which guys, I don't, oh, the float, I'm sorry, 30.47 of all shares, which is 110.80% of the float. That's what they're trying to say. So guys, I have not fact checked that, but I do know that the float seems pretty accurate and the utilization, yes, that's correct. Um, this is what's going on on Twitter right now. We have Will Mead pumping it, guys. So that is a good and a bad thing. Will Mead gets a lot of attention, but remember, he is infamous for the whole pump and dump. So when he decides he's out, be careful. I don't know how much he's invested in this, but he has a tendency to pump and dump. Um, and so if he's saying his price target is now 10, then likely his price target's nine. Again, I don't know. That's not fact. And that doesn't mean it can't go higher, guys. If this truly starts to squeeze, it absolutely can. Um, and he says, Apron is the closest play to Bed Bath & Beyond. They both have a 55% short interest, a low price to sales, and legendary investors involved. My price target is now 10. Guys, Apron has gaps to watch out for. Uh, this 402 to 466 gap, which we're in the process right now of filling, 466 to 490, 508 to 565, 592 to 712, 712 to 774, 774 to 857, 857 to 899. Um, I don't know why they're saying there's gaps in here. I'm going to take a look at that because I don't, this is just giving you basically a price and going up from there. Um, so that doesn't make sense to me. So we can look at a complete chart and see if there are actual gaps. In fact, let me pause this and just take a look briefly. One second. Gapped up today from 385 to 394. So that would be a gap that we would want to fill to the downside, guys, and I am currently looking to see if there's any gaps in the chart to the upside, and there is. Let's take a look at the first one, and that was approximately from 733 to 774. So that would be the first gap that I would be paying attention to to the upside, and once we fill that, then I can go back and address if there's any further ones, guys, because there's no sense in getting too far ahead of ourselves yet. However, that is what I see as far as that goes for now. So we'll keep that in mind going forward. And let's see, Ortex. Guys, Ortex says that the short interest has decreased today down to 37.74%. So shorts borrowed 338.8 thousand shares, returned 546.9 thousand shares, which is a decrease of 208.1 thousand shares, making the short interest no longer over 50%. Currently, it's at 37.74% according to Ortex. And the cost to borrow is relatively low, guys. It's 30.93% max with an average of 27.95%. Now, as the price increased, the cost to borrow generally increases as well. So we will be looking for that in the upcoming days. And again, the uh, utilization is 100%. Now, let's take a look at what Guys, this is actually very bullish because uh, Fintel's reporting a higher short interest than Ortex currently is at 44.80%. Last time I saw uh, Fintel have a sh higher short interest than Ortex, I believe was yesterday and I'd have to go back and double check, but I believe that I saw this and said that that was one of the reason reasons why I was very bullish on Revlon. So if we get a nice move like that, 
based on the fact that clearly uh, something's not adding up. And normally we see the reverse. I like it. This is very bullish in my opinion from based on what I normally see. And I look at this stuff every single day. The short interest uh, ratio would take 1.55 days to cover at the current float, guys. Well, the way it's trading. And according to Fintel, there are 100,000 shares available to float. And that was nine hours ago, though, at 1.58 p.m. So I'm not sure if nobody borrowed them or if nobody's updated. And Ortex is currently, sh I mean, Fintel's currently showing that the cost to borrow is less than what Ortex is showing at 25.08%. Now, guys, what I often like to check, if you watch me, you are well aware of that, is the failure to deliver because that can give us a huge clue. So as you can see, they went quite high towards the end of June. So I'm expecting to see when we go. Interesting. Hmm. They added, I, I'm saying interesting guys, because they added up through the 29th, which is a new adding um, because last night those numbers weren't there. So that's why I, I was pausing for a second. But Today, they had 85,366 shares due, and tomorrow they have 20,598. And on Wednesday, 34,504. But again, guys, look at this. They borrowed them. They couldn't deliver them at $4.04, $4.08. So they are currently losing money on those borrows because when they do this, guys, they're hoping to get them back cheaper. I just wanna see when it gets substantial again. So we get into the 100,000, 60,000 um, on the 21st, which would be, let's see, the 11th, four days, around the 25th of this month, cause it's T plus 35. So, you know, we're still a little ways away from that. That would be towards the end of next week, but there's a lot higher um, FTDs that are due. So it's always nice to just keep that in the back of your mind because they may try to cover those earlier if the price keeps going up because they're not going to want to pay it. Now, there's no guarantees that that's the case, but I just wanted to bring that to your attention, guys. Anyways, keep Blue Apron, ticker APRN, on your watch list because I think that we're going to see some good things come of it and I tend to agree with Will Mead that it is the closest thing that we have to a um, Bed Bath & Beyond type squeeze. The only other two that I would probably consider, and again, I need to do some more diving on them, would be Adder, A-T-E-R, which is known to have several uh, mini squeezes, but it hasn't really had the big one yet, and it's still due, guys, so I'm expecting to see that soon. And um, Peloton actually is starting to look really good, guys, as well as DraftKings and Lemonade would be something else I'd keep on your watch list. But then anyways, that's for another video. I could actually name you about 50 different tickers that I think look great right now. But as far as price action goes and what's going on right now, I think it's a good bet to keep Blue Apron on your watch list. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your night.